Hi everyone. So today's video is going to be really eye-opening and juicy. I'm going to share with you all of our failures. I'm going to share with you our journey from zero book sales to over 200,000. I'm going to share with you how we went from losing everything to restarting. I'm going to share with you our story about getting one of our accounts terminated and then getting that reinstated. And then also I'm going to share for the first time ever our journey with self-publishing titans itself. So I think this video will be really interesting. I've been wanting to make this for a long time, but I've always hesitated. So I think you'll learn a lot about Cleo and I and about the Amazon KDP business and about our journey in general. All right, so let's get right into it. So we started our Amazon KDP journey uh, by actually doing product photography for other people. So at the beginning, we didn't have the, the money or the capital to start our own Amazon FBA product. So we wanted to still get involved with Amazon. So we became freelancers and did product photography. For quite some time, we actually did really well with it. And we ended up specializing in jewelry and other high-end products. So that was quite fun. And during that time period, we also got to learn a lot from some really top sellers and all the successful actions that they were doing with their products and seeing what worked for them and what didn't work for them. So that was a really good starting point for us. And it got us really, really excited to start our own products with Amazon FBA. And then as soon as we had enough capital, we went into uh, supplements. So for months, we did research on finding the best ingredients, the highest quality supplements, the best factories in America that could creates the best supplements for us. This is not our product. This is just a placement because we did a keto supplement. And for our first product, we bought tens of thousands of uh, bottles. And when we launched, we became a bestseller within the first few weeks. So that was extremely lucky for us. And then quite the learning experience and just totally crazy. We were selling hundreds of units every single day. And for people that don't know, selling supplements on Amazon has high, high profit margins. So it was very, very great to be in that business and we would have been set for life. But then the unthinkable happened. So after some time of having this product and having a bestseller and doing really, really well and getting good organic reviews and just really having a life-changing experience with this, our Amazon listing got hijacked and hacked by someone and usually Amazon product images, they have seven or more images and sometimes a video. And every single one of our images was deleted and replaced by uh, this president. And when we contacted Amazon, they had no idea what happened. And it took them multiple days to even figure out how to get those images off our accounts and our original images back. So that was quite crazy. So it took a few days to get resolved, obviously during that time period. We lost a lot of money on ads and then our organic rankings dropped because obviously who wants to buy a listing for a supplement product when it's some precedence as the images, right? Obviously our sales dropped dramatically, almost no sales. And then things got even worse. So once we get that sorted out, it's not too long after, not just us, but 40 other people in the same niche all got hacked this time. And same thing, exact same image was used. And for most of the people on page one, except a few people, they were all hijacked in the listings and the president's image was on there. And once again, Amazon had no idea how that was possible, how it happens. They couldn't figure out who did it. And it also, once again, for some reason, took days to get rid of those images. And it was just crazy. It was heartbreaking for us because we put literally all of our savings into this product. You know, we're not like from some rich background or anything. So all of this was self-earned money. And, you know, there was a family business, you know? So that was crazy. And then once that was figured out, the organic sales were going, but not at a high rate anymore. And then things got even worse. So our ratings were really high. We had around four star average between four and four and a half, always fluctuating slightly. And then we got a review attack. So we got hundreds of bad reviews, all one star reviews, and all of them said that our product was expired, which was completely false. And then obviously Amazon is always very cautious when it comes to that. So they immediately shut down our product, took it off the market. They suspended our accounts. And if you're in in the food or supplement industry with Amazon in that category. Once a listing gets suspended or taken down, it is very, very hard to get the listing back up again. It takes a lot of proof, a lot of evidence, which is not easy to create and generate. So that took us, I think it, it was a week or something. Maybe it was two weeks even. It was some crazy long time. Uh, so we had to work with our factory and a manufacturing company to show that our products were not expired. They were brand new. They were 
actually truthfully higher quality than most of the other sellers because Cleo and I are on Kita ourselves. So this product was actually something that we wanted to take ourselves. So it was, it was a good product and this was just totally crazy. So obviously at that point we had to call it quits. The, the organic rankings after the product was live again, they were almost zero. The Amazon ads um, account was also hacked and then every single one of our ad campaigns stopped getting sales. It was just getting clicks and no more sales. And Amazon had no idea how to fix it or what was wrong with it. And it was just overnight from doing okay and getting sales to suddenly no more sales at all. So, but then the good thing was at the same time while we launched our supplement brand, we also created a cookbook. So this was a cookbook with recipes that uh, Cleo and I and our family were using. And we put a lot of time and effort into this. It took us weeks and weeks to create this cookbook. But as you can see here, this is a screenshot from one of our accounts. After a few months, it took off and it actually ended up becoming a bestseller. And to this day, this is still one of our highest selling books that we've ever had. So we were very lucky in that. Um, and also because we priced the book quite high, so the profit margins were also good. So, so that is when we started going all in on Amazon KDP because we obviously after having this huge loss with the supplements and losing tens of thousands of dollars, we saw this big opportunity with the books and we wanted to create more cookbooks. We wanted to create how-to books and then see what else we could possibly do. So that is really how our Amazon journey started and it's definitely been a quite wild ride, but we're so happy to be here to this day and still publishing books and helping you guys start your Amazon KDP journey as well. So some of the biggest lessons up to this point that we had were only using Amazon search suggestions as the main keywords. So that has been true since day one. And this was a tip we got from a friend that is actually one of the biggest Amazon sellers. He has many products that are ranking in the top of big, big categories. So that was one of the tips he gave us and that is something that he did and this definitely works. Using Amazon search suggestions just shows you what are actually keywords that people are searching for and clicking on. And that's one big mistake we see people doing is using random keywords or made up keywords or keywords that sound good possibly to, them, to those people, but they're not actually searched for. So this is one of our biggest tips. If you start just using Amazon search suggestions, I think you'll start seeing much better results for your own Amazon KDP business. And then the next thing is niching down. Niching down for us has been super, super important. And what I mean by niching down is using long tail keywords. So what we try to do is trying to find keywords that are, or search suggestions that are four words or longer, sometimes three, but usually four or longer. And then that's what I would personally consider as niching down. If you have like a two words niche or keywords, that's just too competitive on Amazon, especially these days. When we started Amazon KDP back in 2019, it was much less competitive. So it was also a little bit easier. So now I would definitely recommend niching down even more. So the, the money is really in the niches. And then once you have a book or a few books that are doing well, the, the, the thing that really worked for us is doubling down on it. So if, for example, we had a book that was an activity book, we would make another activity book that was very similar to that, a similar title, but a different uh, cover and different interior, obviously. And then doing more of that and trying to rank more books on page one, because on page one on Amazon, there's sometimes up to 48 product search results. So if you have one book ranking on page one, you might as well be your own competitor instead of other people being your competitor. So the more books you can rank on page one for a niche that you're doing well in, the better. So do more of that. If you have a soft cover, a paperback book, try a hardcover book, try ebook if you're allowed to have an ebook for that type of book, try and make an audio book. So the more books you have, also the better, the more varieties for each kind of book. And then the other thing that's one of our biggest lessons also is also diversifying. So at first we were into how-to books and cookbooks and stuff like that. Then we diversified our portfolio into other kinds of books. And then the ones that end up doing well, we started doing more of those as well. So definitely be willing to try new niches and new types of books and really see what you're good at. So the next part of our journey is going to Barnes and Noble. So once we had our best-selling book on Amazon, we were wondering what else we can create for books because our cookbook was fun to make, but it took weeks and weeks and weeks to create. And we were curious to see if there was other books we can create that could make just as much money, but were easier or faster to make. So we went through all the aisles in Barnes and Nobles 
and we had a notebook with us and took notes of all the books we saw that we felt like we could possibly recreate. So we realized that there was so much potential with Amazon KDP. We saw notebooks and planners and for the first time ever, we realized that anyone can actually publish notebooks or planners or easy books like that with Amazon KDP. So this was obviously one of the easiest books one can create. But then what got us really interested was puzzle books and activity books. I've always been a fan of doing puzzle books myself. So when we saw these kinds of books, we were really curious on how people can create these books and if we can create these books ourselves and then maybe even creating tools that could help us create these kinds of books faster. And then obviously we saw coloring books and then we were wondering if we could hire a illustrator on a freelancing website to create coloring books. So that was just totally inspiring for us seeing so many different kinds of books and that is really what's got us to go even more into Amazon KDP because we just saw that the potential was limitless. So our first account, we started in 2019 in April and to date it has sold 44,000 books on that account. And then our second account, we started in 2019 in December. And the reason we started creating more accounts is because we started seeing success with the first accounts. And after having all these troubles with Amazon FBA and getting our account suspended and getting our account hacked and hijacked and losing tens of thousands thousands of dollars, it was close to $100,000. We wanted to make sure that our Amazon KDP business was safe. So the, the way to do that was to have more than one KDP account. And obviously you're not allowed to have more than one personal account, but if you're married, then you could each have one. Or if you have an LLC, you can also create an Amazon KDP account as an LLC and that is not counted the same as your personal identity. But obviously do your own research on that. I'm just telling you what we did. And then here, so we've sold between these two accounts uh, over 200,000 copies. And yeah, so I just wanna share a few more things that you can see on this graph. So right here on this red circle is when our account was terminated. So one day we saw an email that our Amazon KDP account was terminated. And obviously we were completely shocked because we've been very strict on trying to follow all of Amazon KDP rules and guidelines. And then when we contacted them, they answered within 30 minutes and then they put our accounts back because there was one small mistake. And it turned out that the actual reason they terminated our account is because they emailed us and for a few weeks, we never responded to them. So they needed for us to take some action on our account and fix one point. And because we didn't see the email, which was really scary, they terminated our account. But as soon as we told them that we wanted to make this right, this one point, then they put the account back. And truthfully, it was crazy because as soon as we emailed them back, I think it was about 30 minutes later, they emailed us back saying totally understood and put our account back again. And luckily our account continued selling. And then right here, this peak right here, this is one of our low content books that ended up reaching just recently the top 100 uh, books on all amazon.com. So that was a really proud accomplishment for us because we had never done that and we've never, you know, that's obviously a dream to have one of your books reach top 100 books out of all the books on Amazon USA. So that was really, really exciting. And you can see we sold over 12,000 copies just in that one week alone. This is a seasonal book, so it stopped selling once this time period was over, but I'm sure next year it will do well again because this book has been doing better and better every single year. And then on this account, here on this red spot, you can see one of our best-selling books we ever had got blocked. Amazon made some claim that there was something wrong with the book, but there was actually nothing wrong with it. And about a week later, they unblocked the book and apologized for the mistake that one of their bots had made. But that book never ended up selling the same again. I guess it lost uh, sales velocity. So the sales started slowing down. And then this circle right here is when we decided to pause all of our ads for this entire account to see what would happen. And there was a few reasons we decided to do that because one, we're a huge believer in Amazon ads, especially when you launch the books. To us, that is the most critical time period um, because obviously when you launch your book, you want as many sales as possible when you're launching because there's something called the honeymoon period. And that is when Amazon is testing at your book and figuring out if the book is good or not and if people are happy with the book and then the algorithm will determine where the book should rank for what keywords. So our belief is that Amazon ads can truly help with that. So we launched almost all of our books with ads, but then uh, this account had books and niches that were very, very competitive and the ad costs kept going higher and higher and higher. So our really profitable ads started going more into just break even ads. 
So we want to take that money into other investments and putting even more attention on ads in this account and then also just other avenues. So that's what happened here. So you can see that these are all organic sales and this account continues doing fine. And also we've also increased the prices for many of these books. So the royalties are higher than they used to be. So then the next thing that happened is that we started another account because we wanted to publicly start sharing our books. And obviously we thought the best way to start doing that is to actually write a book on how to self-publish on Amazon. So this has been a goal of ours for a really long time. I've wanted to write a book myself for a long time. And I also feel like that if you're teaching others how to sell a book on Amazon, you might as well learn how to write a book yourself and then also apply all the principles that you teach to your book itself. So this was just a way where I felt like it was really honest and transparent to show how we publish a book, how we create a title, how we create a description, how we create the cover and the pricing. And a lot of this journey was actually shared in our masterclass in our private group on Facebook. So our students were part of this journey and even helped with some of these parts. So it was really, really fun and clear that all of the editing on the book and she read the, the book from cover to cover so many times and really helped me make sure that the stuff that I was writing made sense and she also added all the images to it and she made the, the chapters in the correct sequence and she worked with our people, our freelancers on Upwork and Fiverr to, that were doing the audiobook and the, the final formatting and the spell checking, all of that. So this was really a big team effort. And what was great to see is that um, once we launched this book in November 8th, so almost one year ago today, the very first week we ended up selling about 600 copies. Uh, these were paperback copies, so there was a huge demand from our audience and then also this book was ranking organically on Amazon and it still sells today so it's really really cool to see that what we're teaching is actually working because you know the, the proof is right here and we continue sharing more and more books and we want to do more of that but that was just the beginning and then up to this point in time on our Amazon KDP journey the next biggest lessons some of this I've spoken about but Amazon ads definitely have a huge huge impact and huge potential with your books to help with your just overall sales velocity but also your organic rankings. So this doesn't have to be true for every book. Some campaigns might not do well. And if they're obviously not doing well, then you can pause those campaigns, uh, which was the next big lesson is that if you run ads that are not profitable, those are not actually helping you with organic rankings. There's a lot of advice that people tell you sometimes that running ads will just help you in general. But for us, this is only true if your ads are break even or profitable. And the reason we believe that is because Amazon can obviously tell how many people are clicking on your book listing and then how many visitors that are on your product page are actually buying it. So if people click on it and then click on something else without buying it, that's just a bad signal to Amazon. So if your ads are not profitable, there's no reason for you to continue running it. Turn them off, but before you turn them off, obviously always try to make them profitable. All right, so next part of our journey now starts including our self-publishing titans journey. So this is our journey with our videos, with our free tools and our other ventures that we've done with this. And if you thought the beginning was crazy, then this is going to get even crazier and probably shocking for some of you. So some of you know the story, but no one knows the true story about everything. So now we're going to really just share our entire story because we want to just be transparent and also show what it's actually like running a business, whether it's on Amazon or in any industry, you know? So back in 2019, that is when we started having good results as you've seen in some of the screenshots. And then I was part of many Facebook groups, uh, Amazon KDP Facebook groups. I was quite active in them. I was answering a lot of comments that people had questions, not questions, not directly to me, just questions in general, but I would answer them and try and be helpful. And sometimes I would post uh, tips or part of our journey or some screenshots, try and encourage people. And I was doing that for a year, maybe a year and a half, something like that. So year and a half, I was just sharing things on Facebook. And during that time period, we didn't have a website. We didn't have anything paid. We had no course, we had no tools. At least at the beginning, we had no tools, no free tools. And while I was making these tips, I got a lot of offerings to be part of affiliate programs or to be part of some brand deals or to do some interviews or some collaborations. Often there was money involved, but during that time period, I rejected every single offer because all I wanted to do was just give help to people because I thought that Amazon KDP was truly a great business and I wanted other people to succeed in that, especially after our gigantic loss of losing tens of thousands with Amazon FBA. So for me, I was just happy helping others. It made me fulfilled and so that's why I was doing that. And some of our posts, they would get over 100 likes, probably reaching thousands of people on Facebook. So some of those posts are really popular. But 
during that time period, once these, once I started making long posts and sharing tips and stuff, I started getting DMs from people saying that I was a competitor to their courses and costing them sales and I was no longer welcome to post on Facebook. And then others banned me without ever even talking to me. They just straight up banned me after sharing tips on Facebook. Uh, one of those people was a huge YouTuber actually. Others were just course creators that didn't want advice shared for free. And I can also understand that, you know, if their, their sales are slowing down and if I'm hurting your business, that was never my intention, but it is what it is. So at that point, I decided to create my own Facebook group so I can share more posts and just grow my own audience. And this was all for free. And we really quickly grew to 40,000 Facebook group members. And then during that time period, we had started releasing the tools that we created for our own Amazon KDP journey for free on our own website. Websites. This website was selfpublishingtitans.com. So everything we shared up to this point was fully free, lifetime free, and everything that we have shared for free is still free today. We obviously have some paid tools, but every tool or every feature that was free, we have kept free since day one. So since that time period, it's still free. And the reason we, sh we started creating our own tools is one, because there was options like Helium 10, but Helium 10 was very, very expensive. And we just didn't feel like we had the budget to stay subscribed for an indefinite time period. And if you don't know Helium 10, Helium 10 is really, really good. Probably one of the best tools. But if you want access to all of their features and all of their tools with full whatever, it is very, very expensive and wasn't for us. And then the other cheaper tools that were there, they were okay, but they had missing features that I really, really wanted to see. So I felt really inspired to create tools that would fit perfectly our own Amazon publishing journey. So at first we created all the tools for free, shared them all for free. And then the other reason we wanted to create tools is because we had such success with some of our books that I wanted to be able to reverse engineer that success and then create tools to help us find similar niches and similar opportunities. So the reason we were so successful early on is because one of our friends was a very, very big Amazon FBA seller. So he gave us all of his tips. And then prior to us doing anything Amazon related, uh, we had a blog of our own that had uh, tens of thousands of visitors every single month. So we had a lot of experience with uh, just general SEO, at least with Google. But some of that knowledge really helped us with Amazon as well. And then obviously part of it was also probably luck. But we did have the best resources and experience to really have the best outcomes so early on. And we want to try to do everything possible to just reverse engineer our success. So that is where our famous niche score came from and our demand and opportunity score. This is what we put into our Chrome extensions. And this was all based on us reverse engineering our books that were selling really, really well. And also comparing it to the books that were not selling well. Because part of Amazon KDP, if you're doing low content books or medium content books, and even some high content books, is that not every book will sell. And this is true to us even to this day. We recently published a planner, you know, it's not doing well. So some niches are just, you know, not perfect. So we wanted to really increase the chances of success as high as possible. And that is what we did with our tools and we've continued to improve them and refine them. And yeah, so you've seen these demand and opportunity scores and other tools, people started copying them, which is totally fine because it's just a great idea. And then after that, the next thing that happened for us in our self-publishing titans journey is that we started making videos. So for the people that don't know me and whatever, I actually have a huge, huge backup and doing any public speaking or being in front of a camera. I don't even like being recorded on my own birthday. Like just even if it's a small crowd, cameras are just not my thing. So I always just enjoy sharing posts on Facebook and I always want to write a book so I can give even more value. So when we did publish that book, I was really, really fulfilled and happy about that. But people kept asking for videos. They said videos, you can show it better, you can explain it better, you can you know do live tutorials. And they were, they were right, videos, are much easier to show things and explain things. So eventually I wanted to just grow as a person and get over my own fears and then decided to start uh, creating videos. So at first I was very slow. I'm even still slow today. I haven't published a lot of videos, but now I'm starting to do more finally. But this is years in the making. I'm still not fully comfortable on camera. I still don't like it. It takes quite some effort for me to get into our studio room and record, but it's getting easier. You know, the more videos you make, the better it gets and the more comfortable you feel. But still to this day, the only person that's allowed to edit my videos 
videos is Clio. We, we don't hire anyone to edit all of my stumblings and fumblings and pauses and repeats. So she does all of the editing for all the videos and all the courses we've done. She's done all of the editing. And sometimes once she's edited it, we've had help of people making the videos even better, but taking all of the pauses and the stumbles and stuff, she's the only person that gets to see that. Anyway, so it took quite a bit of effort for me to even want to do it and try to grow, but what got me to ultimately do it was trying to help you guys even more and share our journey even more. So these were the first two videos I did. These were videos that I did that showed how to use our Chrome extension. So these videos were about our two Chrome extensions, our free tools, and these tools, at least the features that were included in these videos, they're still fully free since this day for the three years. And we, we really truly create these tools to help others. And for the people that don't know, some of these tools actually cost a lot of money. So I'm just sharing this information just out of transparency. And I think it's interesting. So both of our Chrome extensions and our free tools alone, they cost us over $15,000 between the servers, the resources and our development time to maintain them and all of that. So it's truly just us wanting to give back to the KDP community and help others with their Amazon KDP journey. So yeah, so these were the first two videos. And in case some people are curious who are videos that Cleo and I have watched. So at the beginning, it was Rachel Harrison, Rebecca Holman. I think those were the first two that we watched a lot of. And then there's a few others that I don't even remember who they were exactly, but we did a lot of research on YouTube, learning things. And then as time continued, we started watching Nuri, their home bosses videos, Patty Stack and Profits. We've become good friends with all of these people. I've also watched a lot of videos from Dave from Kindlepreneur. Unfortunately, he's no longer making videos now someone is taking over for him but he has a great tool i think it's really good overall he has a research tool and also a book writing and formatting tool and he's been in this industry for a very long time so he's definitely one of the good guys i've also uh, seen a lot of sean's videos Sean Dalwitz. And I do think that Sean actually has good content. Sean actually purchased my course and he gave me access to his course. And I do think that he has had good results. We've chatted back and forth a lot on Facebook. Dane Macbeth, he also, I think, has made really good videos. He has also taught me a few things with Amazon ads specifically. So I think he has some good knowledge too. Chris Raydog, more recently, him and I became friends on Facebook, started talking a lot. I think he has a lot of good knowledge. I think he'll has good results. I think he's another good guy. Ben McQueenie, I think he's also a great guy. Watch a lot of his videos and Ben with money on the side. He's also done good videos. There's more people, but these were just the first people that came to mind that I've watched a lot of videos of. These are not the people that I recommend that you only watch. These are just the people that I've watched the most content of. There's other people I've watched content of and there's other people that are good. This is just, if I had to make a summary of whose videos I've watched the most, this would be it. So the next lessons learned is that you can do everything for free with Amazon KDP. When it comes to learning, you can learn it all for free on YouTube. You can learn it all on Facebook, in the groups by asking questions. Amazon has hundreds and hundreds of help pages that you can read where they can teach you. Amazon also has a YouTube channel for Amazon ads. They don't post frequently, but they do have some videos and they're super helpful. So there's no need for some course or even our tools or any tools you can start totally for free with no tools or free tools or free resources. And that is also why Clear and I have made so many free tools. I think we have 10 free tools that are free for a lifetime that you can use on our website. And we've given away hundreds of resources in our free shop. So yeah, so just if you don't have the money or if you don't even want to spend money, you don't need to. Amazon KDP is really a platform for anyone. And then lastly, one thing I would just want to say about courses, I think courses have the right place. I think courses are good if you want to level up your Amazon KDP journey or if you want to reduce the learning curve. So if one of those things are your goal, then I think courses are right for you. And then you just need to decide of what kind of course you're looking for and what price range you're looking for. So that now this is when things get interesting. So after getting maybe a hundred requests and after doing some videos, I decided to finally create a course. We got tons of requests on Facebook and DMs and comments saying, please make a course, share everything you know. I always said no because of my back off on public speaking and being in front of a camera and just having those fears. You know, I decided to overcome that and grow as a person and just take on more in life. So I'm really happy I did that. So. Over a few months, we created a course. The course had 80 videos. 60 of them were about Amazon KDP. Everything from creating accounts to launching a book and keyword research and everything. And then 20 of those videos were about Amazon ads. 
and we decided to price it really low. We actually asked the audience what price they thought would be fair. And then we priced it around that. When we launched the course, it was $97, I think, or something like that, $99 maybe. And before we even created the course, I also contacted many people uh, on different Facebook groups because some of those people have courses and I kind of wanted to make sure I had their permission and I wouldn't step on anyone's toes. And all of them were happy, one of them was not. And I totally understood why, because you know I, I was always saying I'll never make videos and I'll never make courses because I had no interest in it. Complete huge fear of being in front of the camera and just, you know, all of that. So I totally understood why he was unhappy, but at least I still felt happy that I approached him about it and gave him my point of view. But vast majority, actually all of them were happy that I was making a course and they approved of it. And Cleo and I told ourselves that if the majority of people didn't approve, that we would not even go ahead and do it. So because most people and these people on Facebook, they're also YouTubers. So it's very generous of them, very helpful. And a lot of these YouTubers that I mentioned that I watch, they've also become our friends. A lot of them have given us tips with YouTube even, and just in general. And a lot of these people I'm in contact with quite often. And some of these people I would love to even meet in person. So it's definitely a plan in the future. All right, so then we launched our course. Within the first four weeks, we had about 1,000 paid students. So it was a crazy success. This was all organic. We never ran a single paid ad for the course. We still haven't run as an ad for the course to date. So it was a huge success, completely life-changing in terms of money because I mean, if you can sell a digital product a thousand times, that's obviously going to have a huge impact. And it especially helped us because we lost so much money with our Amazon FBA business. So within the first four weeks of our course release, we sold about 1,000 uh, courses to students. So it was a huge success. It was all organic. We never ran any ads. We had no affiliates. It was just people fully interested in the course. And I think it was such a big success because for a year and a half, roughly every single day, I was answering people's questions on Facebook, free help. I refused any paid sponsorships or partnerships. And it was just pure help for a year and a half. So I think a lot of people resonated with that and people liked our Amazon KDP journey. I wanted to see how we did sell so many books. So it was really cool to see that. But then what happened when we launched there was about 700, there's definitely over 500 uh, fraudulent payments that happened to our PayPal. So PayPal shut us down, they froze all of our money in the account. Uh, and when they freeze your account, they keep all of your money for six months and there's nothing you can do about it. So that was just crazy getting such an attack on our business. It was obviously devastating. It was also painful to have so much money withheld. And then they ended up releasing the funds after I think it was exactly six months. And I think they released it because there was zero refunds from uh, the PayPal, uh, but they did not open our account again. They only uh, released the funds. So a lot of people have always asked us why we don't have PayPal, why don't we accept PayPal payments? So now you know why, because people uh, sent a lot of fraudulent payments to our PayPal accounts and then at PayPal does not have a good customer support system like Stripe does, so that was very hurtful. And then here's just a screenshot showing our Stripe sales. Here you can see that uh, we had 760 sales the first month where we launched the course. So some of the truth on our PayPal account. So as you can see, the, the, the business industry is not always clean. Some people people don't like you succeeding, some people don't like having competition, and some people will do crazy things to get you shut down. You know, it's just the way it is. We've seen it with Amazon FBA when we get hacked and we had the president's pictures on our listing when our Amazon ads account was hacked and then when people sent hundreds of fake fraudulent payments to our accounts. So it's just part of business and you have to be really ready to deal with anything. So then the next thing in our self-publishing titans journey was creating hundreds of free resources. So if some of you don't know, we have a, a shop on Gumroad where we released hundreds of free resources. We uh, released many of our paid um, uh, like book interiors that we paid freelancers to create. We wanted to give them away fully for free so people can have easier access to Amazon KDP and getting started. So all our, our attention has always been to help people as much as possible. So that's why we wanted to do it. And here you can see that we've had 53,000 people download our uh, free items on Gumroad. And some of these people have donated some cents or dollar here and there, which has added up to $795. So to all the people that have donated to us over the years, uh, thank you very much. Obviously it's not a big amount, but it's still very meaningful to us. Uh, but when we launched our Gumroad account, obviously we had thousands of downloads instantly, but some competitor did not like that. And it must've maybe hurt his 
sales or something we have no idea but uh, one day happened where we got hundreds and hundreds of one star reviews to our free products on Gumroad and these are all free resources so before we had mostly five star reviews sometimes four three stars something you know it wasn't perfect but it was definitely mostly five stars and then suddenly we got hundreds and hundreds only one star reviews and then we contacted Gumroad and they even confirmed that this was a review attack and they removed all of the ratings on our free shop and they deleted everything. Uh, so, you know, because it was just crazy to see that. But then it kept happening. So Gumroad deleted all the bad reviews because they could tell it was a review attack but it kept happening, happening with the hundreds and hundreds of one-star reviews on all of our products combined. So obviously at some point we stopped contacting Gumroad and we just, we started deleting the listings, thinking that it could help and then making the listings new again. But even that didn't help, we would eventually continue getting one-star reviews on every product. Um, so if you're wondering why our Gumroad listings have dwindled down to less and less, that's just what happens. And obviously it gets exhausting trying to re-upload free resources if people just keep leaving bad reviews use in trying to ruin your free business. This was just goodwill for the KDP community and uh, clearly I think we know who did it but obviously we don't want to drop any name and cause any drama that's just not our style and obviously when that happens you just have to realize that you're doing the right thing. If you get attacked most of the time it's because someone is either jealous or because they want what you have and clear and I's intention has always been to help people as much as we can. So the other thing that has happened with the self-publishing titans tools with our pay tools and uh, once we started having some free tools we then created some pay tools and one of the main reasons they're also paid is because the uh, costs and expenses started increasing. Some of the uh, resources that we incorporate into our software are very expensive. Obviously the more users that you have the more server power you need to have and then we also started growing our development team so we can make better tools and make tools faster. So we've really great dedicated development team. But one thing that happened is that our paid tools were shared uh, illegally to, with 1,800 different people for free. So people thought it was ethical or okay to purchase our tools and then share them for free with other people. And in some cases, people were charging less and giving away the login credentials to others. And when we finally discovered this because our expenses going up through the roof, we also discovered that these things were happening 90%, 99% from one country. I won't even name one country because it'll be very controversial, but all these people and shared accounts were almost all from one country. Yeah, so that was very interesting to see. Another thing we had to deal with. The other thing that has happened is obviously people downloaded and pirated our paid course and started selling it themselves for less. And in some cases, just giving it away for free. So that was also something, one of the reasons we went away from Podia and created our own platform because on our own website where we created and coded our course platform from scratch, we can just have more control over than a Podia platform. Also Podia had troubles with customer support and some people didn't have access. And then we always had to contact their support team and they weren't always available. So then it was just a pain. So that was one thing that happened with that. So that's also the other reason we started implementing some limits to our tools. So the account sharing can't happen as much and we're also keeping an, a strict eye on people and how many devices they have linked to that so it doesn't happen again but this is just another thing we're sharing we want to be you know transparent and show you that the business industry is not always easy to deal with and that there are people that don't have the best intentions and people that will try to take advantage of you so it's just something i've never spoken about to many people i thought it would just be good to share it and also clear up why some of our tools already have limits and why others will have limits uh, so this is the reason why. So the next big lessons uh, that we have learned on our journey so far is that keep going no matter how nasty your competition is. People that want to see you failing, they obviously don't have your best interests and those people you should just ignore. There's also been a time period when other YouTubers were getting attacked on Facebook and on YouTube and you know it's never nice seeing these kind of nasty things whether it's personal attacks or business attacks or hacking it's just it's not nice to deal with so you just have to when it happens you have to keep going the best thing is to to flourish and to really succeed that that is the best revenge you can have with anyone really just when that happens double down on everything do more expand faster and yeah everything will will be okay you know clean are doing great today we've always taken these 
kind of hits us inspiration to do even more and do even better and get even bigger. The next thing is you have to diversify your income streams. Sometimes you hear people saying you should focus on one income stream, but then if you look at the biggest billionaires and even millionaires, most millionaires in fact have seven income streams. So that is just one thing that we highly believe in. And it also protects you from something happening. So if your Amazon account gets shut down, but you have multiple income streams, then you're not completely in trouble. So like for instance, Clear and I have multiple Amazon KDP accounts. We have three accounts we're actively working on. And once again, these are not all personal accounts. We have LLCs that also have KDP accounts. But the reason we're doing that is just because of our experience with Amazon FBA. So if anything were to ever happen to one account, our other accounts are still fine. But then also we have a course that is making us some income. We have YouTube that is making us money in YouTube. If you're in the money and business industry, it pays you really, really well. So for our videos, for example, we get between, I think it's 12 and $22. Uh, per thousand views, just depending on the topic of the video. So it's really, really good. So if you get lots of views, YouTube by itself can be a full-time income. Obviously I don't publish enough to even make you know, much at all, but it, it is an income stream and it'll probably continue to grow. Then we also have our software and that that is doing well. Obviously we have 10 free tools and those tools were losing money, but we enjoy the goodwill and we enjoy helping people for free. But then we also make up for that with the pay tools. And then our pay tools, I think we have more puzzle tools than any competition out there. And then we have a lot of research tools as well. So that makes us a good income too. And then we also sell on Etsy. We have a Merch by Amazon account. Uh, we also have some physical products that we're selling. And we've done a lot in crypto and in the stock market as well with some of the profits. So yeah, we just have a, a huge variety. So I would highly recommend you don't only do Amazon KDP, start doing Merch, start doing Etsy, start doing Amazon FBA or doing Amazon Arbitrage or selling things on Facebook Marketplace. There's so much opportunity. Uh, we've also done uh, well with blogging before in the past. And that's one thing we're also starting to do again now. A huge tip is just diversify your income because the more income streams you have, the safer you are and the less harm can happen to you. And also maybe if you're doing well with Amazon KDP, but you start doing other things, maybe some of these other projects or ventures that you do end up being even better for you. You just never know until you try it. So. This is really, really a big point for us. And then the next thing is having a, an actual customer database. You need to own your business. The, the thing with Amazon KDP or Amazon FBA or with Etsy is you don't get email addresses. So if they shut you down, you have no customers, you have no business, you have nothing. And that is really, really scary. So. I highly recommend getting as many emails from your customers as possible. Do like give away freebies in your books, give away a chapter, free resources, free bonuses, free coaching or something, whatever you can to get email addresses because the more email addresses you have, the safer you are. And then with the email addresses, you can also sell them different things, maybe merch or some other stuff, digital downloads, digital products. And then the next tip I can give you here is that you need to have really, really big goals. A lot of people have a goal to make $1,000 per month, which is a great goal, but I think you need to have bigger goals because the bigger your goals, the bigger your solutions and your, your way on looking at things become. Obviously, if you're trying to make, for example, $10, your options of making $10 are much different than if you want to make $1,000. And if you want to make $10,000, your option of getting $10,000 is also very different to $1,000 or $10. So I think the bigger your goals and the bigger your reasons for achieving big things, the better. And it's also making all these attacks or issues or competitors, it just makes all these issues look so much smaller and so much less significant. Because obviously all these things that can happen to you, they can be devastating. And sometimes they are devastating and they really ruin you and bring you down. And they can even make you feel like you don't want to continue doing going anymore because it's just so terrible. What I have found is that the bigger the goals, the bigger inspiration and the bigger your motivation for doing things, the easier it is to overcome all of these issues that can come your way. Then the next thing is you need to work really, really hard. Put in as much time as you can. Reduce your time on a TV, watch less shows, use your phone less, you know, maybe delete some of the apps that are wasting your time too much. And that's one thing I often do is if I see myself starting to spend a little bit too much time on my phone, I just delete the app so I can't have that bad habit anymore. 
And then the other thing I think is really, really important for business is really taking care of your body. Because if you take care of your body and if you sleep well, then you're gonna have good energy. You're able to think better, you're able to act better and really get a lot more done. So that's just another big lesson. And now I want to share something that is really, really inspiring that we recent, recently saw. So this is a screenshot of our Google Analytics. And here on this part of the screenshot, you can see where our users are coming from. And all of the blue countries are countries that we have users in. So you can see that pretty much every single country on this planet are using our free tools now. So it's just super surreal and inspiring and amazing that we have such a huge community of people wanting to create an income with Amazon KDP and support themselves, support their families, support their loved ones. And this is just a screenshot showing you how many people have gone to our website in the last 12 months. And you can see it's 273,000 people. So our community is huge. So even after all the attacks, after all the manipulation, after all the competitors wanting us not to succeed. You know, we're, we're doing really, really well. We're, we keep growing, keep expanding. And what we thought was really interesting is that 92% of all of this traffic is organic. Only about 8%, which you can see here, has come from affiliates. So all of this is really word of mouth, organic traffic. We've never had ads on Google or anything like that. Uh, I think about a week ago, we started doing some uh, Facebook ads, but we're only spending, I think it's less than a dollar per day. So pretty much all of this traffic is purely organic, just word of mouth. And it just shows that if you have a good purpose, good intentions, and you really want to help others, that you'll really grow and bring together a huge community. So the next big lesson is just like, if you have a true purpose and really helping people, people will really see that. And we get so many thankful emails, messages every single week, thanking us for making the free tools, for making even paid tools, for always answering every single email, answering every post on Facebook. And I've really tried answering every post on Facebook since the beginning. I, I still check it throughout the day, every single day. I try to answer all of my emails. I try to answer them even within hours or at least within 24 hours. So I think it really helps creating a really good fan base and community and if you're really helpful and really try to help them if they can see that it's sincere and then the other thing is if you have a really good community and a good product you're going to grow organically you know, I've studied a lot about uh, funnels and a lot about ads, but we've never done ads. You know, we, we want to do ads. I think now we're at a point where we can start doing that. But all the money we've made with self-publishing titans has been fully organic. And then now in the last little bit of time period, some from affiliates, but most of it has come before we had an affiliate program. And most of it is just organic traffic and word of mouth. So it's really, really cool to see. So if you yourself want to start your own business, I really highly recommend giving as much value as possible to to the community, to people, help as, as many people as you can. And I think word of mouth by itself will help you grow your business. And then the other thing is you don't need funnels or ads to succeed. Sometimes funnels can seem really, really important for a business or like the only way you can succeed, but we've hardly ever had a funnel for anything. Most of our stuff is just in a really plain shop, not even optimized. We've never even tried to optimize the shop yet. That's also coming in the future, but you don't need to be really technical to grow a business. All right, so now what's next. So this is really exciting. And some of you know these things, but vast majority don't know. In fact, I think there's only five or 10 people that even know that this is coming. So the first thing that's coming is a Facebook group alternative. Uh, since the last year, we've been working on this project mostly in secret uh, because it's such a big project and kind of daunting. And it, it takes a lot of planning and research and resources and time and effort and money to even pull this off. So the vision we have for this platform is that it's a group alternative. And the reason we want to do that is because Facebook has increasingly become more and more full of spammers and people DMing you and you know all this money making stuff and weird stuff and strange messages and spammy comments and it's just not the place that it used to be when it was years ago. So we really want to create our own platform and show the potential it has without spam, without scams. And then as part of that, we want to include a marketplace where people can sell their digital products. So kind of like Etsy, you have the groups, you have the marketplace, but we also want to have a course platform where people can share either free or paid courses, kind of like Udemy. Along with that, we want to have a blog, kind of like blogging websites, but you don't need to create your own website anymore. And then we also want to have a freelancer marketplace like Fiverr or Upwork. So all of this combines into a brand new social media platform. So you can create your own groups. Uh, you can sell your digital products. You can create your own email list, own the email addresses for your customers. I just don't think it's fair that Amazon and Etsy and all these platforms keep all of the information when you're doing the hard work. So 
We want to make a platform that's cheaper and also like some of these freelancer platforms, they charge freelancers 10 or 20% of their income. We think that's crazy high. So we want to make that much, much lower. And then some of these marketplaces, uh, they're, they're charging way too much. Gumroad used to be really cheap, but they've also increased their prices. So we want to create a marketplace that is fair for everyone with lower fees and accessible for pretty much everybody. And yeah, with the social media in general, we also have this concept of creating it uh, as much ad free as possible and creating revenue in other ways and even through donations. So this is something we're really proud of that's coming together and it's the first Phase of this will be launched within the next couple of weeks, maybe even much, much sooner. We're very, very close. So this is something that's coming and we have a full team working on that. So all of our profits we're putting back into just you know creating other great tools and resources for other people to help them create online businesses because online businesses in our mind is just the best. Then the next thing that's really, really exciting is that we're creating our Titans app. So self-publishing Titans has mostly been for people doing Amazon KDP, but our tools can actually be used not just for KDP, but also for Merch by Amazon and Amazon FBA. So the entire Amazon platform. So we're going to start creating tools also specifically for those types of businesses, but then also we're going to branch out into other avenues. So creating tools for Facebook Marketplace, for Google. So people that like or want to start blogging, we're gonna have research tools for that. Uh, the tool has been in the works for a very long time and it's already really, really cool. We're also going to um, repurpose our tools for the uh, Walmart platform, for eBay and all of that. So all of this will be made into one Chrome extension. So right now we have two Chrome extensions and that's also kind of confusing for people sometimes. So all of these tools will be packed into one Chrome extension and whatever you need to use, you can use and whatever features you don't need, you don't need to use them. So it's going to be really, really cool. And then we're also turning all of our tools into an actual app. And the first one will be released uh, first for tablets, then for iPhones, and then after that for Androids. Could slightly change in sequence, but that's the, the idea right now. Uh, so first to come will be the all-in-one Chrome extension uh, with just the tools we have. And then we're going to keep adding tools onto that. And yeah, a lot of these tools will be free. And then some of these more advanced tools will obviously be paid because they cost a lot of money to produce and to maintain. And then the other thing that's coming is a second YouTube channel. So as some of you already know, Cleo and I have many income streams as I shared before. So I kind of like the idea of sharing our journey, not just with Amazon KDP, but also with the other platforms and also just business in general. I think there's a lot that we have learned from all of our mistakes, from all of the pitfalls, from our successes. And yeah, so for those people that are interested in that, uh, I'll leave a link in the video description or I'll pin a comment so you can subscribe to this channel. There's no video yet, but I plan on making the first video soon. So if you want to increase your income streams and see our other journeys across our other income streams, then this will be a great channel to subscribe to. And yeah, recently I started making more videos. So we made one video about uh, KDP scams. So you should definitely watch that. We also made one video about all the KDP lies. So that's also really important. And this is just kind of things that people are not really aware of that I really, really think people should be aware of. And then the other two videos we recently published are just the biggest mistakes that people, especially beginners make. And that's the reason they're having low sales. And if they fix just those things, they can have higher sales. So this video is also really useful and just based on our entire journey since 2019. And then this video right here is just the top 25 books that you can make on Amazon that we think are really good to make and consider. So yeah, check out those videos. Let me know down in the comments any videos you'd like me to make. And I hope you found this video insightful, if you like this kind of video and yeah, make sure to subscribe and then I'll see you in future videos. Bye.